lack of morals will be a very powerful weapon on the battlefield. Normally, such a person would have no place with my lord, though. <laughs> the only bleeding heart we need is Master Leo Bay. Unfortunately, our goals appear to be the same. I will fight alongside of you until Master Leo Bay's dreams fulfilled. What's going on guys? Welcome back to the Night uh, channel. Welcome back to the series where we're counting down the top Dynasty Warriors characters as of the latest game. Coming in at number 43, we have Fa Zhang. Fa Zhang was a vassal who first worked for Liu Zhang. After Liu Bei invaded the province, he served his new lord as a master strategist. He was greatly favored by Liu Bei and was considered one of his closest advisors. Historically, he is credited for being the main strategist behind the success of the Han Zhang campaign. Zhuge Liang has even stated that the disaster of the Battle of Yiling would not have occurred if Fa Zhang was still alive. Fa Zhang, however, was known for being very immoral and being willing to be above the law for his own desires. Despite this, many of his colleagues respected his talents regardless. Now let's take a look at the popularity polls to see why Fa Zhang is up at number 43. In the first popularity poll, Fa Zhang receives 350 votes out of a total of 75,000, putting him down at the 68th spot. In the second popularity poll, Fa Zhang breaks the top 15 and ranks up at number 13. For the second popularity poll, very impressive to see him all the way up there. And then in my personal rankings, he's going to drop back down to the 51st spot. So for me personally, I, you know, Fa Zhang, just like some of the other characters we have already covered, he is a newer character since he was introduced in Dynasty Warriors 8 Extreme Legends. And because I haven't played any of the Extreme Legends series, Fa Zhang is a newer character to me. He is brand new to me as of Dynasty Warriors 9. And uh, getting to know the character and seeing, you know, how he interacts, personality and stuff like that, I didn't really... You know, the, the limited time that I played Dynasty Wars 9 before I made the list, I didn't really have an impression of Fajan. He seemed like a cool character. I liked the way he looked, um, but he wasn't really a character that stood out to me where it was like, oh, I'm going to play this guy right away and I'm going to see what he's about. He was just a cool looking character, but not enough for me to play him or favor him right out the gate. Before we jump into how Fajang, I guess, has changed, he's not going to really have any changes because he's a brand new character to me as of the newest game, but uh, let's talk about who Fajang is for people who don't know. So Fajang originally served the provincial governor of Yi province, Liu Zhang. However, his feelings of alienation and perception of Liu Zhang as an incompetent governor eventually led him to betray Liu Zhang and defect to Liu Bei. Three years after his defection, Fajang assisted Liu Bei in overcoming Liu Zhang in order to seize control of Yi province and became one of Liu Bei's most trusted advisors. A few years later, he urged Liu Bei to launch the Han Zhang campaign to capture the strategic Han Zhang commandery from Cao Cao, but died a year later after Liu Bei emerged victorious in the campaign. Fa Zhang's keen foresight and brilliance in formulating strategies earned him praise from his contemporaries such as Zhuge Liang and Chen Shou. In less than a decade serving under Liu Bei, Fa Zhang showed a near unmatched sense of timing where military geniuses like Cao Cao and his best advisors fell victim to his schemes. However, he was also notorious for his vindictive personality. When he held office, he abused his power by taking revenge against those who had offended him before and by killing them without reason. Nevertheless, he was still highly regarded and trusted by Liu Bei to the point where Zhuge Liang once said that Fa Zhang might have been the only person capable of preventing Liu Bei from starting the disastrous battle of Yiling in 221 if he were still alive. So Fa Zhang played a very key role in terms of strategists and advisory when it came to the Shu Kingdom and Liu Bei himself, which I didn't really know. I didn't know he was that big of a, you know, influence to Liu Bei when I was playing through the games. Uh, Fa Zhang was definitely there, and he definitely was the credit for like the Han Zhang in the Mount Dang Jun battle, and uh, coming up with the strategy in order to succeed in that battle. But I didn't really think it was that big of a deal in terms of coming up with the strategy, and you know, winning a battle. I didn't think that was that big of a deal among the series. But he played a very influential role to Liu Bei, and when he originally defected, he was one of the main people to convince Liu Bei to attack Yi Province. In the previous games, I didn't really notice. Fa Zhang's importance to the Shu Kingdom. Um, I believe he had a little bit of an interaction in the eighth game, but he was an NPC and, you know, he didn't really stand out. Where well, I remember him clearly as an NPC playing a big role in the Battle of Mount Dingjun or, or the pacification of Chengdu, whatever it was, 
he didn't really stand out like that. Learning more historically about Fa Zhang, it definitely makes more sense about how he is this vengeful kind of... He's pretty villainous. He's a pretty, like, mean person. But throughout the game, he doesn't really... I don't really sense that from him, especially when he's first coming to Liu Bei, and he's like, hey, I want to... I want you to attack Yi Province because the guy that's currently ruling it is not worthy to be ruling it. You need to be ruling it. You have a better vision and you can lead it a lot better than the current ruler. And the reason that he did that was because he was thinking of the people there. The people wanted Liu Bei to rule that province and that's what Fa Zhang's argument to get him to do that was because Liu Bei didn't originally want to because you know he had his family and when we get to Liu Bei we'll talk more about that but you know Fa Zhang was thinking about the people and saying we need to you know save the people and that's you know ba the basis of Liu Bei's you know benevolence and virtue and that's you know for the people kind of thing and then at the end of his story he also talks about if Guan Yu because he was you know he was seeing what was developing the battle of Fan Castle happened Guan Yu has taken over Jing province right and he's at the center of all three kingdoms right now so Fa Zhang realized that if he was one of the other kingdoms he was like listen if it was me i would attack guan yu get him out of the way take that territory and then set up a campaign to either attack one of the other kingdoms and he advised them that if guan yu was slain at the battle of Fan castle and shu was betrayed by wu he was actually advising him not to take revenge it's just so weird like the the advice that was given to liu bei from fa Zhang was a very it seemed very, I mean, he cares about Liu Bei, obviously, he's very close to him, and he wants Liu Bei's vision to come true. I didn't really see any, I didn't really see any vengefulness or, you know, that vindictive personality that was talked about in history or just in general, just because he was built to look like a very vengeful and mean person, but I didn't sense that really at all throughout his story. But maybe that's because of his loyalty to Liu Bei and how strongly he wanted Liu Bei to acquire his dream, you know, it was only during those moments that his story was actually being played out. But according to history, he abused his power by taking revenge against those who offended him before and by killing them without reason. Some people, some officials actually approached Jie Liang and told him that this was a problem that needed to be, like, solved because it wasn't, you know, it wasn't fair to those people being killed for no reason, right? But uh, Zhuge Liang basically told him that because that, you know, first of all, he was watching the movements of the other kingdoms and because of Fa Zhang's past contributions and like the support that he has from their lord that he wasn't going to intervene in this he didn't want to like disrupt that relationship so he just left it alone so Fa Zhang was actually extremely close to Liu Bei almost to the point where I would say he's even closer to him or he was as close to him as Zhu Ge Liang like they were on the same level with that being said let's go ahead and talk about Fa Zhang in the Dynasty Warriors series starting off with his appearance uh, his appearance, like I said, looks really good for him. I, I think he's one of those characters that looks, you know, I think he looked cool. I think he looks appealing. I would definitely, definitely play him just off the way he looks. But his weapon style is what kind of, I, honestly, I kind of got tricked a little bit with his weapon style because I thought when I first saw the wallpaper in Dynasty Warriors 9 of Fa Zhang, I thought his blade was like a half, like, semi-circle blade. I was like, oh, that looks pretty cool. But I found out it's actually the, it's actually the whip that he uses, the Urumi, but it's actually just like extended out, like it's just been stretched out. But the blade or the whip is actually, you know, it actually curls in. And it has the exact same motion and attack like the other characters that have that weapon. So, uh, not, I mean, it was kind of a letdown in terms of his weapon. Hopefully they give him something else. I know in Dynasty Warriors 8 Extreme Legends he had a cloth or something. Not very appealing to play with that as well. Who uses a cloth for battle? Hopefully they give him something that's, you know, I mean, the whip is, I guess, an actual traditional weapon, but it's just like, you know, a sword would be nice or some sort of cool looking blade, whatever it is. I'm sure they could figure it out. A pike, you know, whatever. It's just, you know, I think Fa Zhang or like a blade, an arm blade or something. That'd be cool for Fa Zhang. He's a villainous guy, right? Give him like an arm blade. That'd be dope. His weapon style is okay. I wouldn't really, you know, jump to play him again just based on his weapon style, but it was, it was all right. Musao attacks were basic. And, uh, yeah, nothing really too fancy where I would want to play that weapon style. Just, like, for the weapon, like, I wouldn't want to play him again just for the weapon style. Like, I wouldn't, it's not very exciting. And then finally, his voice acting. I think his voice acting fits him pretty well. You definitely have that villainous undertone within the game. And, uh, just, I think it fits him really well. I mean, it's the first voice actor that I've heard from him. I haven't played the other, 
uh, series, so I don't really know what he sounded like in the other game, but he sounded pretty good. I like the way he sounds, and it fits his look and who he is, and can't really complain too much about him. Now let's talk about his most important battles and significant relationships, and of course, his death. Starting off with his most significant battles, the only two significant battles he has is the Battle of Chengdu and the Battle of Mount Dingjun. Chengdu, he doesn't really play a big strategic role. I mean, of course, he was there to fill in the gaps of wherever, you know, Zhuge Liang and Peng Tong wasn't giving, you know, the correct advice or whatever it was. But he had Zhuge Liang, he had Peng Tong, and now he has Fa Zheng. He had three brilliant tacticians there to help him acquire the land of Chengdu. I think it was mainly Zhuge Liang and Peng Tong's, like, strategy to take down Chengdu and... Uh, acquire it from Liu Zhang. But the Battle of Mount Dingjun was definitely Fa Zhang's strategy, like 100%. He was the guy behind it. He was the reason they were able to take Han Zhang and the reason they were able to take down, you know, Shao Yuan, like we talked about earlier in the series. In order to take down Shao Yuan and acquire that land, that was Fa Zhang's plan. Now, moving on to his relationships. He obviously has one with Liu Bei, but we're going to first talk about the one with Zhu Ge Liang. So among Xu's strategists, Fa Zheng shows respect to Zhu Ge Liang, but at the same time, he may also belittle him as well. Fa Zheng and Zhu Ge Liang did not share the same moral beliefs, but they had a good working relationship because of their common goal, which was to serve Liu Bei well. Zhu Ge Liang was very impressed with Fa Zheng's brilliance. However, Fa Zheng doesn't think too highly of his fellow strategist's choice of thinking with only his brains, rather than also considering how factors like rationale and emotions may play. And that's why I believe when Fa Zheng, I guess we can talk about his death too. When Fa Zheng passed away in the ninth game, uh, he actually he actually told Zhuge Liang to please like leave the room and then like talk to Liu Bei one on one. Master Zhuge Liang, I wonder if I could be allowed to talk to Master Liu Bei alone for a while. Would you mind excusing us? And at this point, I guess Fa Zheng knew in the, you know, within the game, he knew he was going to pass soon. He was advising Liu Bei to not take revenge if Guan Yu was killed at the Battle of Fan Castle, which actually happened. And then the Battle of Yiling happens as, you know, revenge for Guan Yu. And, uh, you know, they lose it very, very badly. And Zhuge Liang is quoted to have said that if Fa Zheng was still alive, the Battle of Yiling would not have happened. Or if it did happen and Fa Zheng was there, the result wouldn't have been as disastrous. He basically says that if he takes the path of revenge, he's not going to be able to do it well without Fa Zheng being in there. And that's what he says in Dice Wars 9. Master Liu Bei, I will give you one piece of advice. If it does come to pass that Master Guan Yu is slain, you must not allow yourself to pursue revenge. If you had a villain like me by your side, then it might just work. But without me, you're simply too kind. And then I guess we'll talk about his death as well. He literally dies in Dynasty Warriors 9. They give him like the the really <laughs> terrible death. He just kind of slumps over and he dies. Like it's just so bad. Fa Zheng? Fa Zheng! And then of course the relationship with Liu Bei, Fa Zheng has all the way up until his death. And uh, Liu Bei stresses. I think he says it to a lot of people. I mean, Liu Bei shows that, you know, caring and compassion for all of his, you know, subordinates and officers. And so does most of the other leaders and stuff. But, you know, Fa Zheng was very, very close to Liu Bei. And uh, just be from, you know, think about how he came into the kingdom as being a traitor to the enemy. He could have been a spy. He could have been like a, you know, he's a villainous. And it's just so weird. He's a villainous guy, right? And he could have easily betray Liu Bei and whatever, you know, sabotage their attack, whatever it was. But I guess his admiration towards Liu Bei and his grand ambition and whatever it was, you know, he had that intense loyalty, that genuine loyalty towards Liu Bei. And that's why I didn't really get the sense that he was a villain. And I, I didn't see him, you know, they had to have some more stuff. They need to implement more stuff for his story next time because I don't really get that. He sounds and looks the part, but I didn't really see it in any of his actions. He had great strategies for the battles he was a part of, but I mean, the betrayal thing, I don't think that's a villainous thing. I think a lot of characters do that, you know, Pang Dei eventually left Zhang Lu to go with Cao Cao because Zhang Lu lost. I mean, he, he lost and Cao Cao was like, you're talented, come with me. Cao Cao killed Lu Bu, took in Zhang Liao because he's talented. I mean, like the whole betrayal thing, I think that's just so normal. Zhao Ba, he left Wei to go to Shu because he thought he was going to be killed. It's just... You know, everyone has their reasons, and I don't think he did it for a villainous reason. Like, it just doesn't seem like that's what it was. 
Fajang genuinely seemed concerned in the ninth game, in the game, he, he genuinely seemed concerned about the people. And he was saying that Liu Zhang was an incompetent ruler. He wasn't, he wasn't taking advantage of all the natural advantages that he had within the region. And he, and that's why he went to Liu Bei. He was open to those suggestions and to that advice and got him out of situations where, you know, like the battle of uh, Mount Ding Jun in history was actually going bad. It was like there was a situation where they were at a disadvantage. Fa Zhang turns that around and puts the advantage again towards Liu Bei in the Shu Kingdom. And that's why I think Zhu Yiliang said that if, you know, Fa Zhang was at the Battle of Yiling, it might have gone a little bit better because he could have turned it around and actually got Liu Bei out of that situation. But that's all I have for Fa Zhang here. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comment section. I actually like Fa Zhang. If they just give him a better weapon, he's going to be a better character for me. And he's definitely going to shoot higher up on the list. But I like the way he looks. I like his voice acting. Maybe show a little bit more of the like villainous thing. Because again, I don't really, I, I just didn't really sense it throughout the game or his story. But I guess he has that. But other than that, I generally like the character. He seems really cool to me. And I'm looking forward to see what he looks like in the new game. But if you guys use him, if I miss anything, let me know down below in the comments. But that's all I have, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, definitely appreciate it. Like, comment, subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching, everyone.